a minute. Let me take this down. There we go. Okay, can everybody see this? Chris, can you see it? Okay. Yes, but my thing's spinning. Okay. All right. It may be my connection. Okay. When we start talking about scholastic records and genealogy, we we need, I know you'll want to work back as far as possible. So we can go back to medieval times by using apprenticeship records. And you have to remember that before child labor laws and everything like that, uh, a child was just another helping hand around the family to do work and to make money and um, bring in income. So for apprenticeships, young people were placed with a master, okay, and they were formally bound with a contract. So this formulated a paper trail. Uh, a lot of them were technical um, occupations for boys, blacksmith, um, you know, printer, different things like that. But there were also girls, about 3% of the apprenticeships were for girls. And, um, and those were like in dress making, um, made, different things like that. In 1601, the system was extended to anyone under the age of 21. Refusal to participate in a apprenticeship basically required time in prison until a master was found. And people of certain statuses were required to take an apprentice. The Stamp Act of 1709 um, put a tax on the indenture, and that's what it was called, an indenture, which resulted in formal centralized records. So if you go into um, a uh, online repository, you, you may see these from time to time. Uh, at the, um, and they'll come up as, it looks like a contract, but it's, it's also called an indenture. Uh, again, most popular for the girls was the dressmaking position. And after 1757, um, indentures were replaced by a stamped deed that was still called an indenture. Um, indentured persons were sent to the colonies. Some left for um, the colonies by means of an indenture. So they, they went to the new world under an indenture to work at the New World. Um, and it wasn't only England that had indentured ships it, or apprenticeships. Uh, Germans had them, Italians had them. So they, they were all over. Um, in England, they lasted until age 24. Uh, less than half of the apprentices completed their requirements. And failure required forfeiture of all monies paid in because their parents paid their masters, oops, paid um, their masters for this training. And um, so all that was lost. And basically, it was a pretty difficult life ahead because you were an untrained person. And a lot of apprenticeships were used for an advancement. For example, if a young man did good in his apprenticeship and he married up, perhaps married into his master's family and things like that, things became very successful. Um, and apprenticeships were advertised in papers. So you can look back in the old papers and see these advertisements for um, you know, a boy to work here or, or different things. The um, once, once the indentured was satisfied, then the person went into a, a basically a journeyman status where they, they were experts in their field and they could go off and work on their own. Uh, 
when you start looking to do a scholastic research uh, for your ancestor, the first thing you need to do is formulate a timeline of the school age for your ancestor. Now, remember they didn't have kindergarten and different things like that. Um, very often it was grammar school, but in different settings. Okay, during the 18th century, um, schools were mainly operated by charities, churches, and private organizations. There was a movement in the Episcopal Church called the Sunday School Union. And the Sunday School Union um, took in those children who did not have the means to afford um, a, an education and basically provided them with an education, but it was religious based. And you can still see some of the old Sunday School Union books where the ABCs were taught and, and different things like that in church, okay? Early 19th century, primary schools were operated by the churches. Oh, again, Sunday School Union, I'm sorry. The um, Education Act of 1870 established school boards normally um, located locally with elected individuals. Okay, now this was very spotty. And the schools were like the one house or one schoolhouse type things in villages. In 1880, education was mandated for children up to the age of 10. And then uh, the Elementary School Act of 1899, it was raised to 11. Now these are British rules, but a lot of them were um, emulated over in the United States, okay? So you, you can almost look at the same type timeline. Now what you have to remember when you're talking about education, it's the same, the same philosophy as everything else in genealogy. If you were rich, you, they'll, or if, if family was rich, then there'll be lots of information on education and different things like that. If they were poor, there may be a lot of information, but it's through the other ends on the courts and different things like that. In 1899, the legal age to leave school was raised to 13, and then in 1918, it was raised to 14. And finally, um, uh, it went to 15, and then by 1972, it was 16. And I still believe 16 is still the legal age where you can leave the education system. Okay, why am I having trouble here? Okay, whoops. I'm trying to move this because it's blocking my... <laughs> okay, now, as far as the United States was concerned, in 1647, the Massachusetts Bay Colony ordered every town over 50 families that had to have an elementary school. Okay, so you'll see a lot of grammar and elementary school um, records in uh, New England. And every town over 100 families had to have a Latin school. In 1695, Maryland established, established a tax on furs to set up a system of free education. So 1695 is when Maryland was establishing um, the individual community schools. And in 1717, King Williams School, later St. John's College, was founded in Annapolis. And it caused another tax on the importation of Irish Catholic servants and black slaves was passed to uh, fund schools in each of the 12 counties that was in effect at that time. In 1779, Thomas Jefferson proposed a two-track education system for the laboring and the learned. 
So at that point, they were trying to equalize the education system. In 1790, Pennsylvania required free public education for the poor. And in 1830, there were laws forbidding the education of slaves, still 5% became literate at the risk of prison or other punishment. Okay. Where are you going? Ah. Okay, so it wasn't until 1816 that Maryland started collecting property tax to fund schools, which is how they basically still fund schools to this day. And so that's when the public schools really began to be established. In 1856, University of Maryland began with the Maryland Agricultural College. Baltimore City established public schools in 1830. And in 1862, the Land Grant Act established two-year schools or community colleges. And that's what require that's the requirement that put community colleges in every county. By 1918, the Smith Hughes Act um, added vocational education. And then 1949 is when everything started booming for the baby boomers. They started building schools everywhere. And basically desegregation of Maryland schools began in 1955. So you're going to go out and start searching for information. Well, th the best bet is family records, family papers, books, and other keepsakes. Um, start looking through those. A lot of uh, information on education is often overlooked. Uh, school photos, uh, senior calling cards, high school autograph books, journals and diaries. Um, memorabilia, fraternity, sorority, school clubs, uh, yearbooks. We're going to go into a lot of discussion about that and report cards. Now, it used to be por report cards were only like a three by five card and it would have um, letters written on for different things. Um, and, uh, but don't be looking for the report cards, like I know I had, where it was a whole book. Um, instead, it was just a, maybe just like a little postcard. Okay, school photos. A lot of times, what you'll find with them is something like this that will not be um, basically identified as to everybody who's in there. Um, but uh, this is a photograph taken at Rock Run School in Harf County. And I have seen, um, excuse me, this class identified. So what you can do is start searching um, for other copies of this photo that may have identifying information uh, on it. Yes. Mary, sir? let them all in. Let them all talk to you now. Okay. Are there a lot of. There's only, you know, there's only a few. Just, I mean, you're, you're going pretty okay. quick. And just let them all talk. Okay. To you. Um, how do I. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for attending this historic society's event. And. Uh, um, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Mary. Okay. And if ever you need me to slow down, I know I'm, I'm going fast. There's a lot of information on this. And it's also very difficult to teach when you're just talking to your computer um, and uh, not getting a whole lot of feedback. But I need to figure out how to unmute. Not a talk. Not a talk.
Okay, have I got everybody? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Say. Okay, good. This will, and Marcy, you there? Roger? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Is there anything you need me to go back to right now, Debbie, Kathy, Marcy? No. No. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, is that in the historical societies, especially Harf County, we get a lot of these types of things, the, the school photos um, in. And uh, so the best place to start looking is a local repository or your historical society for information on the schools that your ancestors um, attended. And again, this is a, this is an early one from uh, Rock Run. And uh, I know no one there, but I, it, it's, it's one that I have seen identified. Okay. Where are you? There we go. Another thing that we have um, are artifacts. And for example, this is a drawing of the Rock Run School done in 1950. It was built in 1847. That school is no longer there, um, but uh, that's what it appeared to be. There's Rock Run or Craig's Corner Road if any of you are familiar with that area. And right behind there is now what they call the, uh, or the cemetery for Rock Run Church. And then there was a, a barn there. I can actually remember the outhouse for this uh, school uh, still standing at, up on the hill next to the cemetery. And it got knocked down quite a few years ago. In fact, I think somebody took off with it as part of a prank. And the other artifact we have is the school bell from Rock Run School. And it is, uh, it is labeled inside with information about the school. Now, schools were basically by village, okay? because my grandfather lived not too far away from Rock Run and he went to school in Lapidum. Now, if any of you are familiar with uh, Harford County, you know, Lapidum right now is just a road, but it used to be a thriving city and they had a school down there, they had a church they had all sorts of different things. So he went to school at Lapidum. So you, you have to look into the area not as it is now, but as it was then, and see where they might have gone to school, Darlington or uh, Dublin or different things like that. Other sources of information, newspapers, okay? They, they are full of information about uh, schools and different things like that. Um, Historical societies, the school, but that's that, that's almost a a situation where you could run into a problem. There are some schools that do have a, a bit of an archive, but most of the time, as a government agency, they're kind of uh, shipped off to. A centralized location and and not necessarily kept by the school. Google is a very good place to search for information on schools. Google Books. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Books, if you go to the Google web page and type in Google Books and then hit enter and then it'll come up Google Books and you go in there, 
you are now searching millions of books. And a lot of times, especially on uh, colleges and uh, different organizations, you're gonna find a lot of information. Alumni associations, I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Libraries, um, fraternities, sororities, and clubs, Future Farmers of America, Future Business Leaders of America, Future, a lot of different things like that. Okay, so if you're thinking, well, you know, my, um, my grandmother went to uh, Have to Grace High School and she graduated in this year, so I should just be able to get her record from Harford County Public Schools. Not necessarily. The full record is retained until the student reaches age 21 and then it's shredded. Um, information on transcripts is retained on microfilm or CD. And basically the microfilms have um, all disintegrated. And prior to 1990, they have degraded to the point where they can't be read. Um, Transcripts cannot be requested for genealogy purposes. Um, they do provide information for military, social security, and other employers that need verification of uh, schooling, but uh, not for genealogy. And the best source of information on school activities and graduation is a newspaper. Um, but you have to be careful with newspapers, especially when it comes to listing of graduates, because the list of graduates was always sent a long time, sometimes a month or so before graduation and they would have students, of course, fail out. And uh, so when they're, re when the Board of Education is relying on newspapers, they have to be very careful to make sure that that they um, did graduate. Yes, Debbie. Um, what about um, like high school newspapers or college newspapers? Okay. The, it, Which, if, um, where could you find those? Because like my high school has closed down. So I don't know where they put all that information. Right. Um, that's one of the things I tried to look at is where you could find uh, back copies of a high school newspaper. And I guess you could call the school to see if they have copies in their library or if um, the, the uh, Board of Ed has some kind of archives. But other than that, um, I have not found any place that actually saved um, the newspapers to, to go look at. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's, it's such a shame that all that information, because we get, we get newspapers, college or school newspapers or uh, school uh, publications from time to time at the historical society and when they come in it's it's so amazing to to see you know how the kids interacted with each other and different things like that and uh, what what kind of things were news and what kind of things weren't so um, uh, I found a school newspaper up at the historical society I forget what year it was and they were talking about the shipwreck dance. And I had no I idea what a shipwreck dance was. And I, I finally found out it was a dress where you could, you could wear clothes that you would wear on a, if you were shipwrecked, you know, dressed down. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and, and so I, I know I'm kind of waving a carrot in front of you right now because the society is cl closed down due to COVID, but we have so many things up there and it, it's amazing at the am amount of information that we get from people who 
who think, you know, they don't know what else to do with it. They're cleaning out their parents' garage and they find all this stuff and they say, well, maybe the historical society will be interested in it. And yes, we are. We don't turn anything down and we go through it. And we, it's, it's wonderful. I, I'm so lucky to have the job I have because I get to, to see this stuff come in and, um, and we try to make it available for the people to come in and do the research. And of course, right now that's impossible. So I, I, I almost feel like in giving you this class, I'm, 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 I'm teasing you by saying, look, we got this and this, but oh, you can't see it yet. Um, but Chris Smithson, who's on here with me, uh, a lot of times somebody will call in, we have research by mail, which is uh, $30 an hour, right, Chris? Did you just yes. Yes. And, um, you know, you can call in and, and get one of our genealogists to, to look up information, okay? It's, it's, there's a fee involved, $30, but they, they make it worth your while. They get a lot of stuff done in, in one hour. And um, it's, it's a way now to be able to research if you need to, okay? But we're hoping... <laughs> Can I interject a moment? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one of the big things that we do uh, with the school records is um, that uh, when people are having their class reunions uh, through the years, their 25 year, their 50 year, uh, their 60 year, whatever, we have people come in and, and utilize the information to help identify uh, classmates that they have lost contact with. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we usually get it when they have their 50th anniversary or, or their 60th or whatever. Very, very few is it anything below 50. Um, sometimes the 30 or the 40. So uh, one thing we also have at the Historical Society with the school records is we have some stuff from the Board of Education uh, with who some of the teachers were uh, besides the um, yearbooks, we also have uh, some big ledgers that came from the Board of Ed that go back to the early 1900s. Okay, are you done? <laughs> Do you have anything else, Chris? Yeah, my screen's frozen. It's not allowing me to look at stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and if I mean, I found my grandfather's report card, and but he only went to fifth grade, and um, and I knew a little bit about talking with him uh, about his his school, but he didn't discuss it that much. The funny thing was when um, up at the historical society, they had a copy of my dad's um, yearbook. He's still alive, and. Uh, so I got to um, talk to him about his high school escapades and some of the things they had written in the, the yearbook about him. He had never seen his yearbook. He actually dropped out before graduation. So um, that was I, just a story I threw in there. I, I apologize. But um, newspapers, if you search online, for newspapers, uh, newspapers.com, you know, of course that's a subscription, but um, if you go to the Library of Congress and uh, do digital newspapers online, they have a huge collection of uh, digital newspapers that you can search through, free, doesn't cost you anything. And, uh, and I've, I've used that quite a bit. Okay, and military. There is some college newspapers on there. Oh, oh yes, yes. Um, under the for military academies, they fall under the administration of the National Archives. Okay, Fold Three does have some admission records and application records online, 
They have West Point admission applications from 1805 to 1866. They have um, Milica military academy registers from 1867 to 1894. Register of cadet applications 1819 to 1867. Naval academy registers of delinquencies 1846 to 1850 and 1853 to 1882. Naval academy academic and conduct records 1881 to 1908. And on e-yearbook, which I'll discuss in a few minutes online, they have the U.S. Naval Academy yearbooks from 1898 to 2005. Okay, yearbooks. Ancestry.com has a huge collection online, and one of the best ways to get to it if you're an Ancestry.com subscriber is to go into catalog, search for yearbooks, and then click on the yearbooks and then do a search um, just basically on the collection. Um, My Heritage has yearbooks and alumni list that is a subscription. I, I am not subscribed to that. I don't know if Chris does. Classmates.com is free, but that's more recent. That's more like a pre-Facebook Facebook. Now, e-yearbooks, it costs only about $13 per year, but it has proven to be a, a wealth of information. They have a lot of yearbooks on there from uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, and different things like that. Um, when I went to search for my high school, Havity Grace High, they only had two, I think it was 53 and 54. But others I found on there went back to the 30s, 40s, and different things like that. Uh, Don's list, uh, when it's free online, but it really uh, doesn't have a lot eBay has a lot of yearbooks for sale. And I, I went in there and checked, I typed yearbooks and hundreds of them came up. So uh, if you're looking maybe to get a copy or look into a yearbook from a certain school, you may have to buy it, but that's, um, that's one good place to go looking for old yearbooks. Now, the next, um, the next place Hatha, is Hatha Trust. When I first saw this, I never heard of it before. And it is, it is a website that basically is an archive. And it has all sorts of documents on it. So if you do a search on, let's say, uh, uh, Havity Grace High School, uh, you may not get that much, but if you type in Havity Grace, you'll s start getting all these information. And uh, I'm going to try to see if I can do this. Okay. Share screen. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm going to move you back up there. Can everybody still see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's half a trust digital library, and it's is literally millions, millions. Okay, so and it's free. So, um, like I said, I typed in Havity Grace, and please work for me. 
and it's all sorts of different things like flood insurance studies, but it, and you, and you can, you can pinpoint, because we don't want to look at France, where you want. Mary? Yes. Oh. Which one the screen is your PowerPoint, not the web? Okay, why did, why did it, it says. You have to unshare your screen. You have to unshare the screen and then hit shared screen and then go to the option for your uh, for your web browser. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you can see over here where it has um, different things. So subject United States. It sort of sort of filters out what you're looking for. Um, English. Okay. And uh, this will get you, I haven't found a way to just get the schools, but over here you'll see um, different universities. So we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, tons, tons of documents. And um, it's, it's a good place to search for different information. They go back to Commodore Rogers. Um, but, and then origin and location, University of California. Okay. This doesn't necessarily mean how many years people went to University of California. This is just where the records are kept. And Really, if you if you play yeah. around enough with these, uh, you can come up with some pretty amazing information. And um, there's tons of stuff on here. And um, I I did um, Hartford County Schools. And survey of the public schools of Hartford County, report and survey. A lot of these are government entities, but some are um, other types of information. Uh, annual reports, history of Hartford County, school bulletins, um, census of jails, in case anybody was not so good. Um, and different things like that. So I, I highly recommend this as you got a snow day tomorrow. If you're not doing anything, sit and play with this as much as you want. It's, it's, um, it's a very interesting uh, site. And it was one that was recommended by some of the uh, some of the sites I looked at for, um, there we go. There we go. I'm gonna move this down here. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, come on. Okay, and those are sideways. I did not mean for that to happen, but a little bit of exercise. <laughs> These, this is our collection of, uh, let me see, fix that. No, can't fix it. Yes. Um, I apologize about that, but this is uh, our yearbook collection. And uh, if you look very carefully at that one box, you will see that our yearbook collection goes back very far. And it's by school. We have um, Aberdeen, Havity Grace, and, and different things. So uh, we are very proud of our yearbook collection and uh, uh, we are always adding to it. Uh, the other day I got, got in a yearbook from 
um, I'm trying to remember where it was from, Bel Air for 1935. So Bel Air High School. And again, these are crooked. I didn't know, no, they were, I, I apologize. But um, here you can see the Rock Run Academy information we have on that. Um, and um, the Slate yearbooks, Slate Ridge High School, Cardiff, Maryland, 1945, 46, and 48. Ah, okay. So we talked about newspapers.com. That's Again, that's a subscription in the Library of Congress. But don't be afraid to um, look at other libraries, college libraries, and different things like that, um, or even community libraries for your books, school newspapers, or other, um, other things they may have on um, file. I'm going to try to go to this. It's called the Ancestor Hunt. Mary. Yeah. Ah. Another thing that the library, uh, the, the University of Maryland has, is they're starting to digitize their senior thesis. Yes. Yes. And I was going to get into that in a little ways um, when we started talking about college. But the ancestor hunt, it's, it's basically, I think it's free. OK. Um, no, it's not free. There is a subscription fee. Um, and, but I don't think it's that expensive. But they have yearbooks, they have photos, they have newspaper links, and other directories and more. And it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, oops. No, I don't want to add. OK. And uh, so that's another place where you can look. Stay away from public records. They, um, anything that. I, I don't like public records. They're just a big ripoff. Um, when they pop up, I automatically go out. Okay, let me see if I can get back in here. Ah, newspapers. Ah, there we go. Okay, other records. Um, nowhere you might possibly find things. Uh, again, local libraries, local genealogy societies. I found the um, Livingston County Colored School Census from the 1898 to 1913. Um, they're online. Uh, census records, uh, those are good telling the students in school, not, sc not in school if, if um, they're at a boarding school or if they're at a college. Again, church records, um, the, um, a, a lot of schools were associated around churches, and then memorials, okay, and I'm going to go to this one, okay, this was amazing, they, they have, um, this is a college, Princeton College, okay, and they have um, memorials online for like 1909, okay? And um, not only do they, they have the person and what year they graduated, but they also have information. He was a federal judge and one of the oldest alumni. So, you know, get creative and where you look and I have to go back here. Um, why isn't that? Mary, were you showing the page from Princeton? 
Yes. Was it not showing? It was only showing up on no. your computer, not on the. Okay. Correct. You have to flip it. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back. Stop share. Okay. Share screen. And there we go. Share. Okay. So I'll do this again. Um, it shows the years. Goes all the way back to 1909. Okay, and I didn't have anybody. Um, nineteen seventy-two. There we go. And uh, see, you give um, information on the person. So alumni associations are are a, a great place to look for college records. Now, college records are a little different than uh, high school records. Uh, they're, they're not so, uh, they're not so top secret for some reason. Uh, college records, they're usually maintained in archives, usually. Now things can happen, fires, you know, floods, whatever, the college shut down and things disappear. But um, if your ancestor attended a college, they, you, sh you should be able to contact the college. And in most cases, most, not all, um, if you have a certificate of death, um, you may be able to apply to get their college records, okay? Um, and again, another place to look if they went for a higher education and had to write papers, a lot of those papers are maintained in archives. So, and some of them are searchable through Google Books and different things online. So um, you can look through that. Um, I'm... Uh, but the same uh, privacy laws that apply to high school records do not apply to college records, even though there are privacy. If the person is still alive, they have an extreme amount of security when the, as far as privacy is concerned. But if, um, if they have been deceased, and you can prove they're deceased, then, um, and they still have the records, then there's a chance that you may uh, be able to get those records. Okay, and I'm gonna go out here. Come on. Ha -ha! Okay. And let's see. I'm gonna go here. I know I have to go out. New share. There. New share. Can everybody see Baltimore Polytechnical Youth Institute? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, again, it's a memorial page. Okay. Graduation years 1887 to 1899. And sometimes you can hit pay dirt and sometimes you don't. But look at all this wonderful information about um, the graduation years and the people and different things like that. So you know, don't be afraid to look for memorial sites or um, alumni sites, um, different things like that. I know a lot of you will know what I'm talking about when I say who's who. Remember the who's who book? Um, yes. It was a big deal to get in the who's who book, but basically they found out it was just a way of selling a bunch of books, but they did do um, information on people and um, I haven't found where any are um, archived, but um, that may be a way of, of finding out more information. 
again, the, the richer um, a, a person was, the more information you'll be able to find out about them. Uh, sometimes the poorer they are, the more information you can find out about them. The middle class can fall into a deep, dark chasm where we can't find anything. Um, but that's just because they were ordinary people. But um, the sports records and different things like that, um, they, they should still be in the local newspapers. There may be... Um, pictures or uh, uh, trophies at the school. So just different things like that. Okay. Again, I apologize. I am, I am not that good at just sitting here looking at my computer talking. Um, it's still a, a uh, trick for me, but our hour is almost up. Now, Sheepskin. I know everybody's heard the saying, um, you know, going through college, getting my sheepskin. That's because a lot of degrees were printed on sheepskin. Okay. And so when you find one of these old degrees, um, it, it, it has to be treated as fine art. Okay. You, you can't steam it open or anything like that. You can don't try to iron it or flatten it. This is a time for professional. Okay. You need to keep it out of the sun. Mary. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, Chris. Someone's in the waiting room that Bill says you need to let in. Okay. Sandra? Yes. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Okay. Um, okay. Keep it down. Okay. We we get a lot of sheepskin uh, degrees that are given to us, and they're in frame or they're not in frame. They're just all bunched up, but if it's something that belonged to one of your ancestors and you want to preserve it, then you need to get a professional involved because these things are very, very um, fragile and, um, but they're very, um, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a treasure. Okay. Um, Uh, what we have at the Historical Society is we have Dr. Archer's from uh, 1768. Yes. Yes. But I'd say I've... And I I've, actually have my... Go ahead. I have my third great grandfather's from 1838 from the Baltimore Washington College. Um, we also have his school book from the uh, Bel Air Academy, which is there on Pennsylvania Avenue uh, from 1834. So uh, we had to have that professionally done. It, it's now in a glass frame uh, hanging on the wall, but it, it's not one of these things that you want to mess with. No, no. Um, a, a lot of diplomas come into the historical society that aren't um, sheepskin, they're just regular paper, high school diplomas or whatnot. Um, but even parchment is a is very delicate and has to be um, preserved professionally. Um, the okay, so we're we're at eight o'clock here and I have talk to my computer for an hour now. I hope I haven't bored you. Are there any questions? Hello? No questions? Is uh, Mary? Yes? Do I, I don't have a mute in. Do, do you want to say how we want to do the... Yes, I'm going to introduce the next session. 
The next session is a brick wall session. It's going to be um, completed by Chris Misson, who's been assisting me on this, and myself. Okay, and this is where you have the opportunity to put us to work for you. Okay, if you have that one person that just, you can't find anything on, okay? And you're, you're about ready to scream. And that's what's called a brick wall. When you run into a person, you can't find any more information on. And you can submit a question about that brick wall person to Chris or I um, through the, um, my email address at admn at harfordhistory.org by April 1st, 2021, because you got to give us some time to be able to do the research. And I see your hand raised, Debbie. Um, and that class is going to be on April 14th, 2021, which will be a Wednesday. Now, the only thing that we're looking at right now is if it is better to have these classes in the afternoon to around two o'clock or three o'clock or so, or in the evening. When we had the classes at the Historical Society in person, it was always easier to do it at seven o'clock because most people you know, would get off work and have dinner and then run over for a class. But now that we're doing these online, um, we, we feel we may be leaving some people out who have time during the day to, to um, participate and no time at night. So, um, any feedback on that type of thing is is appreciated. Uh, right now, we're we're looking at possibly having it in the afternoon, um, and so that would be. I would need to do it in the evening. You you would need to do it in the evening. Okay, so uh, again. Yeah, because I'll be back at school. Okay. The oh the time will will probably have to be. Um, in the evening then. But you can submit a question and we will do our best to find out. There, there haven't been very many that stumped us, if, if any at all. And it doesn't matter where it's from. No, it can, it can be from Europe, it can be anywhere. Um, there, there, I, I did have one on a Russian one time that proved to be difficult because the Iron Curtain hasn't exactly opened with all the genealogical information over there yet. But um, I did find some things on them. So send us your toughest brick wall question and we will see what we can do. And Debbie, you had your hand raised. You can go ahead and talk. I can hear you. As long as you're unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, my brick wall is in Poland. So I was wondering if you guys would be able to help with that. We may. We may not. Um, a, a lot of border changes happened there in Poland. Yeah. yeah. And so... It can, it can be tricky, uh, but who knows? We might find something. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Now, let me ask you, would, um, did, did this class provide you with any information you were looking for? Yes. I mean, yes, I have been, I just do like ancestry and I have gone to family search. Right. And family search is another one that's free and it's good, but it's, it's a little bit more ancestry. I like them better because you can go into the catalog and search by individual yes. collections. Family think, search doesn't have that. I don't, yeah. at least this class, I mean, this session was able to give me some new um, 
avenues to go down for some of my right. family members. Right. And don't forget fraternities, sororities. Um, I, I mean, not everybody had big man on campus as an ancestor, but um, you know, you might find some information um, that will surprise you. A friend of mine, um, I, I pulled up her father's yearbook uh, and his nickname in, in school was Lover. <laughs> and she, okay, and he was part of the unholy three. <laughs> so, and, and, and Mary, I have a question. This is Debbie again. I have a question. You said that you found in your, um, well, I think you said it was your grandfather's um, report, report card. card. Right. And he only went to the fifth grade. Correct. How were you able, evidently you knew what school he went to. In order to be, yeah, see, um, I don't know what school my grandfather went to, so I wouldn't even know how, to, I know it was in Baltimore. But. Right. That's where you have to dig around to, I, you almost have to look for um, government papers on, you know, which kids went to which school type thing. Um, Do you know where he lived? Yes. I know the exact address. Okay, so you want to look Okay, you want to look at ad, you want to look at schools within a few blocks of radius of where he was living. But again, that could be tricky cuz he might have gone to a church school. Um the, or right. how long ago are we talking? uh quite a long time i mean i'm let's put it this way i'm 61 so yeah and he's been dead for like 30 years now so okay um church records as far as the sunday school union that was many mainly an episcopal church thing but the there was no requirement for the students to be episcopalian right so don't don't write off the fact that because there was an Episcopal church there, they might not have gone to, you know, they didn't go to church or school, Sunday right. school there. And um, that's how Sunday school got, got started, was this Sunday school union and trying to put some education into the poor. And um, so, you, you have to be open and remember, you've got to look away from the way we know schools now. Back then, it was totally different. There was no kindergarten. There's no preschool. And probably by the time you were 10, you were working in a factory somewhere or on some apprenticeship or, you know, training at some job. Right. And in the industrial north, they had kids seven, eight, nine, and 10 working in the, in the manufacturing. Well, and, I know that he had, the reason that he, I know the reason why he had to quit school is because his father had died. So right. and that's, you know, and that was around, and I think 1920 when his father died. Right. The main reason my grandfather dropped out in fifth grade was because he had all the education his family thought he needed to run a farm. And that's what he did. He, he farmed from then on. But the man was amazing. He, I, I don't even know how to draw up the algebra pro problem, but he could figure out how much seed he needed to plant in a, a 50 acre field so that it would yield 10, um, 10 bushels per acre and how much money he was gonna get off the yield. He could do that in his head. <laughs> you know, I all right just, mary we have about four minutes left okay but um we we hope that all of you have enjoyed this uh course and um it's free of charge but feel free to drop by our website and harfordhistory.org and there's a little donate button and we hope that you will uh, make some sort of donation to help along our uh, calls. So thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you.